A bill supported by the Putin regime and currently before the Duma could lead to the deaths of 90% of Russia's 4.7 million homeless dogs. The Putin regime backs legislation that the Duma is about to pass that will give local governments more autonomy in dealing with the issue of stray dogs. Animal rights activists fear that if the bill is approved, as many as 90% of Russia's 4.7 million homeless dogs will be shot dead in the streets. More dogs will be abandoned by their owners without being microchipped or sterilized, so even a massive slaughter won't solve the issue. Thus, the current number of homeless dogs will likely double or triple within the next few months, triggering yet another slaughter. Holod. Media, 6 May 2023, Bezdemye Sobaki. More than 120,000 people have signed a petition opposed to the measure being circulated by activists. But it's doubtful that will be enough to derail legislation backed by the Kremlin. There is a significant and unregulated market for breeders in Russia, and mandatory sterilization is not required, all of which contribute to a severe homeless dog problem. In fact, many Russians believe that sterilization is both too costly and dangerous for dogs. Nizhny Novgorod and St. Petersburg are just two cities in Russia where the homeless pet population has decreased significantly after implementing the recommended program of capture, sterilization, vaccination, and release. However, in other areas, the problem is still severe, and the sheriff's deputies are prepared to use extreme and even lethal force to solve it. Even though only 10% of strays are considered dangerous, the new law will treat them the same as every other dog. There are far too many stray dogs in Russian cities, and the number of pound and animal refuge facilities is too small to do much about it. In the words of activists, a fundamental shift in mentality is what's required. Executing innocent animals whose only crime is that people have treated them with no respect is not necessary if, for example, Russians treated dogs the way Germans do. Paul Goebel has devoted his career to studying issues of race and religion in Eurasia. He most recently worked as the Azerbaijan Diplomatic Academy's Director of Research and Publications. He has worked as a senior research associate at the Euro College of the University of Tartu in Estonia and as a vice dean for the Social Sciences and Humanities at Adans University in Tallinn. He has worked at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, the Voice of America, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, the United States Department of State, and the Central Intelligence Agency, among other places. The Madrid Declaration was signed in May. Our bilateral relationship has been strengthened in many ways thanks to this declaration, the first of its kind signed by the United States and Spain in two decades. And now, a year later, this meeting and the meeting our government's president will have with President Biden this Friday are evidence of the excellent state of our bilateral relationship. Many factors contribute to the closeness of our two nations' linguistic and economic ties as well as the presence of our respective businesses and universities. Many of these topics and avenues for collaboration have been discussed today including our joint defense efforts and the migration agreement through which Spain and the United States will collaborate to encourage the safe, humane, and orderly migration of people from Latin American countries. We talked about Palomares and the Scientific Cooperation Agreement renewal to encourage continued cooperation with NASA, especially for the Artemis program. We recently signed an MO to cooperate in another area the Global Equality Forum's efforts to safeguard the human rights of LGBTQI people.